Alright, hey everyone, welcome back to A-Level Lessons Online. Okay, we're finally back with microeconomics again. Yes, I know it's been a very, very long time since the last video. I think it's been, uh, what, I think two or three weeks, okay? Because uh, I've actually been rather busy, okay, with my own things, and I've been feeling a bit under the weather, okay? So, with a sore throat, honestly, it's not very, very easy to actually try and um, do videos for you guys, okay? So, don't worry, I'm finally back, okay, back in the grind, okay? We're going to be covering a lot more microecons, as well as I'm going to be bringing some microecons to you guys as well, okay? So, this next part I'm going to be covering on will be cost and revenue. After that, I'll move on to your yeah, different types of firms, okay? That is where I think a lot of you guys tend to have a bit of complications, okay? Your perfect comp um, your perfect comp comp competition firms, sorry, uh, your monopolies, your oligopolies, your monopolistic competitive firms, okay, all that kind of good stuff. We're gonna be covering it all in the in this month to come. Okay, don't worry about that. Um, also, if you guys want, okay, those of you who are interested in GP, general paper, okay, I also have a few videos that will be coming up soon. So go check out my previous GP video. Okay, I've already, uh, I'll leave the link in the top right corner of the screen as well. It is actually, I believe, quite a good video for you guys who are wondering how to write a good solid introduction all right so if not further ado let's just jump right in okay because i know it's been a while you guys have been requesting for videos i am back so don't worry so let's go into part 11 of microeconomics covering costs and revenue all right cost and revenue is part of your entire um syllabus of firms and decisions to be specific all right so let's just firstly try and distinguish something which is the difference between short run and long run right when it comes to econs you're gonna have to understand a lot about what is counted as short run what is counted as long run okay things like your short run as your short run uh your long run as okay that will be in macroeconomics for this part okay just take note that short run is referring to a time period with at least one fixed factor of production what do i mean by this your factor of production your land labor entrepreneurship and then your lastly um your your capital and all okay those are your factors of production whereby in the short run output can only be varied by changing the quantity of variable factors of production so variable which means that your these factors of production can actually change so in this case your fixed factors of production are uh, they, they can um there is there has to be at least be one fixed factor of production um whereas the rest of them can actually change that is basically what the short run is about okay when you're looking at factors of production on the other hand, long run. Long run is usually referred to as the planning horizon. So for those of you guys who have heard of planning horizon, it basically means to the long run, what is your potential output in the long run? That is basically what planning horizon means. So it is the planning horizon in the produ production process whereby all the factors of production can actually change. So there is no fixed factor of production. For instance, land is not fixed. Okay, it can also change in the long run. Let's say by clearing up more more land space okay, or, or trying to find more labor. Right? It doesn't have to be fixed in the long run. They can all change with time. Okay, so just take note of the short run and long run differences. This is quite important. Alright, so then now we move on to uh, the actual part, which is your cost. Okay, what are the different types of costs in the short run? Okay, so in the short run, you have got total fixed cost, total variable cost, um, average fixed cost, and average variable cost. Okay, and then lastly, you have got marginal cost and total cost. Okay, actually, these do not necessarily have to be diff uh, cost in the short run. Some of these can be in the long run as well, but um, to lump it up, okay, these are basically sorry, uh, the main types of cost that you have in the short run. So total fixed cost, okay, essentially the total fixed cost, as it says in its name, is fixed. So it does not vary with the level of output produced and it occurs only in the short run. So every time a firm has to take into account anything, um, the I mean, um, pertaining to their fixed cost, they look at total fixed cost in the short run. So the variable cost, on the other hand, total variable cost, okay, it varies with the level of output produced. So initially there is increasing marginal returns, right? We'll go through this concept in another bonus video next time, okay? But when the law of the diminishing marginal returns actually sets in, costs will actually rise faster than the increase in output. So this is what your total variable cost is defined as, okay? Basically, it is the cost which can actually be varied with different levels of output but it reaches one level where it starts to drop okay as a result of your um, law of diminishing marginal returns okay your average fixed cost and your average variable cost is very simple as the name says average so it's just the total fixed cost or total variable cost divided by the total quantity okay marginal cost refers to the additional cost of producing one more unit of good or service so marginal here the definition of marginal basically means additional so it's the additional cost of producing that one more unit and lastly, your total cost is just the sum of your total uh, variable cost and total fixed cost combined. So cost in the short run, you just need to understand that there is a total fixed cost, there is a total variable cost, marginal cost, and the total cost. 
I know it's a lot of costs, right? But go and uh, try and understand all, all these kind of costs, okay? So in the long run, costs can actually be uh, different, okay? Because the reason being is that all factors of production can actually be changed, like we have defined just now as your planning horizon. So with the factors of production being changed, your outputs in the long run can also change as well, okay? In the long run, essentially, all outputs have to always be productive efficient. We'll learn what productive efficiency is in another video. But for now, just take note that all outputs in the long run has to be produ uh, has to be productive efficient. So in the long run, there's only one cost. It is known as your long run average cost. You're, bas you're basically summing up a few years down the road, every single cost and making an average cost. This is what we call the long run average cost. So as a result of not having any fixed factors of production, okay, um, this long run average cost will emerge. So the long run average cost is the per unit cost of producing a good or service in the long run where all factors of production are actually variable like we've mentioned just now. So by increasing the scale of production, okay, there will be a fall in your long run average cost due to the ability to reap economies of scale. We'll go through this soon. Okay, whereby when you increase the scale of production, you can actually harness certain benefits that um, as a small firm, you may not be able to harness. So these will act as cost savings, hence reducing the long run average cost. So you're looking at kind of like a few different total fixed costs and variable cost curves in the long run. Those are basically what makes up the long run average overall cost. Okay, so like I've just mentioned economies of scale, let's jump into what economies of scale actually are. So economies, uh, economies of scale, okay, by definition, are cost savings reaped by a company due to the ability to produce on a very, very large scale. So basically, when you look at firms such as Apple, Apple can produce on a very, very large, massive uh, scale. As a result, this production line, okay, actually allows them to reap uh, significant cost savings, okay, whereby, for example, they can bulk buy items, they can save by uh, having certain specialized labor in certain areas. So all this, by producing on a large scale, will allow them to actually reap this internal EOS, okay, economies of scale. So you've got a few different types of economies of scale you need to understand. First one is going to be technical EOS. This one refers to basically the specialization and division of labor. So how do you average out okay, your cost by um, getting certain people to specialize in certain production lines? Okay, <coughs> This one leads to a higher level of productivity and hence lowering the average cost. Next one, I've got indivisibilities. This one basically means that with... Um, uh, machines that are being used, okay, when they're actually employed to their fullest, used to the maximum um, of their capabilities, it reduces the average cost. Because, for instance, if you buy a printer that can actually print um, 5,000 of sheets of 5,000 sheets of paper in one minute, right, but you end up only printing 10 sheets of paper in one minute, uh, because that's all you need, you're actually wasting that um, machine's capability to do even more and help you to use that extra 4,990 pieces of paper to help you make more money. Okay, and lastly, you've got economies of increased dimension. So this one is with an increase, um, uh, basically, uh, uh, dimension in terms of scale. Okay, that means the costs do not rise proportionally with the size of equipment. So even with uh, more uh, larger equipments, okay, the cost may not necessarily rise as well. But with more equipment, it could um, cause the cost to rise, okay, if that makes sense. Okay, so essentially what this basically, it's not a very important point, but what it essentially means is that your costs do not um, do not rise proportionally with um, any increase in the amount of equipment being employed, okay, because they are all being used uh, very, very efficiently. Okay, then you've got marketing EOS. This is quite a, a popular one, okay, amongst a lot of firms. Bulk buying and advertising. You notice firms like Apple, Samsung, Tesla, they all love to uh, advertise a lot. Everything is about advertisement. Okay, and advertisements can help to actually um, um, increase the cost of a firm. Okay, uh, hence that's why I say we had advertising cost per unit may be lower than that of smaller firms. Okay, for bigger firms, because of how much they can actually reap as compared to small firms, okay, advertising can help them to benefit uh, in terms of increasing their revenue and all by a lot and help helping to reduce the overall cost okay because the cost is actually essentially spread out across the whole company for that advertisement okay bulk buying is very very uh simple basically a lot of these big firms when they produce on a large scale they can purchase a lot a lot a lot of um services and goods yeah, like for example the raw materials from suppliers and suppliers will sell at a lower price because of this bulk buying Okay, next one, you've got financial EOS. Financial is basically, like, it's Im immense finance. Okay, you look at things like funds which are being bought. Okay, they tend to be easier landed. I mean, they are, they are, they are basically um, easier given to bigger firms okay, because of their credibility. Okay, credit worthiness. So, more established firms, okay, likewise, can actually borrow a larger amount of loan. Okay, since they can provide more assets back in return. Things like stocks, okay, they can actually offer stocks back. 
Okay, and there's also more means of raising funds, such as through the issuance of shares, which basically the public will buy into the company and invest in the company, giving the company more money um, to actually help them in reducing costs in other areas as well. Okay, last one is manager EOS. This one is basically your management team. So you're looking at how do we hire management, okay? So you can basically, through uh, having a large firm, have certain groups of management teams, okay, focusing on different areas of the company. So this will help in the long-term strategic planning of the company, hence reducing the lower average cost in the long run. So this one we're looking more at the long run. Okay, how do firms actually plan the way they use their money, the way they reduce costs in the long run? And this can be done with bigger firms because with higher amount of uh with larger numbers of people, okay, they can actually split the job easier. Okay, by splitting the job and get, getting each different managerial um team to actually focus on certain aspects of the company, this will help to reduce overall costs across the whole company as a whole. Alright, so then you have got the this economies of scale, the this EOS. This one is basically anything that works against a company. So it helps to increase the company's cost. This is not good for the company. So for instance, when there's a loss of direction and coordination, time lags in implementing decisions, okay, when, when higher management team is unable to pass on their ideologies and their, their inspiration to workers, okay, um, this can actually be a def, uh, the there can actually be a time lag okay, between the two. Hence um, it results in a loss of productivity, which can increase your average cost. Okay, people work slower, that kind of things. Okay, poor communication can also occur. Okay, when there's the misinterpretation of information and inaccurate information being passed down. Okay, so this can result in a loss of productivity as well, increases your average cost. And last one will be a very common issue amongst a lot of these sweatshops that Apple and Coca-Cola all employ, which is the low motivation and morale. Okay, when workers feel very, very upset at what they're doing, they feel that there's no motivation to do better because they think that they're just insignificant in the whole process of the company. This can lead to higher um, absentee rates, okay, and hence re- resulting in an increase in your average cost as well. Okay, so next we have got external economies of scale. So these are basically cost savings in the form of an industrial level. So internal economies of scale, like it says, internal is just internal to a company. External economies of scale is as a whole industry, all the companies being um, working together to actually reduce the overall cost of the entire industry. So this includes your small and your large firms. Okay, first one is economies of concentration. Actually, this is basically all we have. Okay, which will be the difference in the... Uh, I mean, when 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 all these companies co- uh, conglomerate together, okay, for example, Silicon Valley, there's actually higher levels of uh, skilled labor out there. Okay, there's a train workforce, there's better infrastructure, and there's ancillary firms. So, for instance, things like buses that provide transport amongst the different firms, that can also reduce cost savings. Uh, can, can also increase your cost savings um, by having to cut down on unnecessary transport companies being hired by individual firms. Uh, when you are grouped together, okay, there can also be better infrastructure, um, better workforce as well, okay, because everyone there is all smart, everyone there is doing the same thing. Uh, you can basically make use of each other to make better decisions as an industry. So this usually involves the higher management teams as well. Okay, um, another one would be economies of information. So like I've just said, okay, when you share the cost of research. Okay, when people, when, when higher management teams decide, oh, okay, right, let's work on something together. Let's work on a drug together. Okay, they share research. Okay, this will allow them to um, boost, okay, the overall industry's reputation, the overall industry's goods and services that they're being produced. And lastly, it will be economies of disintegration. When an industry is heavily localized, okay, firms can split out the production process and specialize in a single process. So, for instance, when you look at Apple, okay, their screens, LED screens are all bought over from Samsung, right? So, um, because they're all found together, okay, they can actually split up certain parts of the process and get certain suppliers to do certain things. Okay, this will reduce the overall cost of research um, and having to do things on their own instead. Okay, as well as, uh, I mean, similar to internal uh, this EOS, there's also external this EOS. So, this will cause the... Uh, the um, increase uh, increment uh, increment in average cost okay of the entire industry so for instance because of higher competition okay um for labor and factor inputs this can actually cause the the wage levels to rise okay overcrowding can also occur there could be traffic jams increased human traffic things may slow down there's lower productivity increases your average cost as well and lastly pollution okay with increased pollution uh firms are gonna have to pay more okay in order to help to clean the environment. So this can also be a greater cost, especially in recent times as well. All right, so actually that's all about, I mean, everything I actually have for this part on cost and revenue. Essentially, based on your syllabus, you just need to understand what's the differences between short run and long run costs. I mean, not, not cost, right? The difference between short run and long run. So what does short run affect? What does long run affect? 
um, in terms of production and cost. Okay, explain and discuss the various types of economies of scale, as well as the dis EOS, okay, that benefits and limitations to a firm or an entire industry. So your internal EOS and your external EOS, go and learn what they are. I've already gone through in, in quite some detail in this video already. Okay, and lastly, just look for some examples if you can to support your EOS. So for instance, Silicon Valley, your science parks, this will be very, very helpful in terms of um, enhancing the cost savings for your external EOS. Okay, uh, or other than that, uh, companies such as Apple, Nike, they reap high levels of internal EOS. So go and understand how do they do it um, through their different production lines, their managerial team, and the different types of EOS that they can actually reap. Okay, so if not, actually that's all I have for this video, cost and revenue, quite a simple video that is not entirely, um, um, doesn't exactly have a huge weightage over the entire syllabus, but it's good to know. Uh, it can always come out as an essay question, so go and understand um, how does EOS work, difference between short run and long run, because you'll need to know that as your fundamental uh, knowledge for the rest of the sub uh, topics to come. Okay, so if you did enjoy this video, okay, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out a lot. As well as to subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy. Leave a comment or a question, any anything that you may have, okay, down in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer it. If not, the next one, I'll, I should be doing perfect competition. Okay, maybe next one, we'll move on to some geography or GP uh, first in terms of uh, videos. Uh, but if not, the next one, you should be seeing perfect comp competition. It will be coming very, very soon. If not, yeah, actually, that's all I have. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, bye-bye.